So if you are following my channel for quite some time now, you must be aware that I am on a mission to make you guys aware of various software engineering roles that exist in the industry apart from the SD roles that everyone talks about. So previously I've talked about data engineering roles in top tech companies, I've talked about front end roles at Amazon, I've also talked about cloud roles and in this video I am going to talk about a role that I've not yet talked about on my channel and it's a highly requested one. So this video is about SD that is software development engineering in test. So this video is going to break all the myths surrounding testing, all the confusion that you have and I'm going to show you that how even in this testing field you have a lot of growth opportunities as well as good pay ranges. So if you're someone who is more into breaking things than making things then this video is definitely for you. So you can be a fresher or you can be someone who is into this industry for quite some time but cannot find your way around the lead code hard problems or you can be someone that have just stepped into the industry and have got into automation testing or testing kind of roles and does not know that how to you know grow in this particular field then this video is definitely for you guys. In this video I have got Sahil Puri who has got an extensive experience in this SDET field and has worked for companies like Adobe, Google and currently he's an engineering manager slash tech architect in company called Zupi. Uh, so yeah, let's jump onto the video and welcome Sahil Puri. Hey Sahil, uh, welcome to my channel. How are you man? Hey, hi Riddhi. I'm good. Uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine too. And uh, thank you so much uh, for taking uh, some time out and agreeing to do this. So in this video, as I mentioned in the intro as well, we are going to discuss about uh, the estate roles. And my first question to you, Sahil, uh, if you can briefly talk about uh, who are the estate engineers and what problem or what engineering challenges do they solve? And if you can probably do some comparison with the work that the developers do in the company, like the SDs, it would be great for my audience. Sure, sure. Um, so really, if we go back in history, uh, we would see that the SDET term was first coined by Microsoft in early 2000. And mm -hmm. at that time, the, the aim of this role was to bridge the gap between dev and QA. Now, over the years, mm -hmm. this role has gone through a major evolution, especially in the last decade. Mm -hmm. So, right. and, and th this evolution has been in terms of uh, not only in mm -hmm. skills, in the roles and responsibilities, but even in the uh, scale of compensation and ROI, right? And if you, mm -hmm. no, so right. if you ask me today, who is an SDET? So I, I would say an SDET is uh, uh, any engineer who has the ability to play almost every agile role, but with a special focus on quality. And with this evolution, what is ensured that there is a huge scope and a huge market for SDET role and uh, almost as big as any other tech role, including the front end, back end development mm -hmm. and DevOps, as per the today's mar market scenario. So also I understand that even like I have also passed out in 2019, not quite a long back and back in college, there used to be this huge myths around testing, right? People don't generally consider, you know, testing as a good career option and they mostly go for other roles, like mostly development roles and other roles that exist. So, uh, like, what do you think on that? Like, uh, because I personally know that there is a lot of growth opportunities in estate, but since you have, be, you have been in this field for quite some time, you work for top tech companies. So can you probably you know uh, shed your uh, light on the myths that exist in the testing industry and uh, why do you think that people should actually come to this room so uh, frankly uh, there ha there are uh, many myths which have been haunting the uh, testing industry uh, you know from long mm -hmm. uh, i think i would love to share the top two uh, which i feel are the need of this hour so the first is that automation is uh, the key or the solution to all the problems. So if you learn automation, mm -hmm. you can crack any estate role out there, which is not the case. So uh, I want, want to press on this fact that automation is neither the start nor the end of the estate role, but it is mm -hmm. a very important pillar of what estate do, uh, does on day to day basis, right? So this role mm -hmm. has a vast depth and breadth in terms of other skills which we, we will we will be discussing uh, in in the coming few minutes so uh, it's very important for freshers to understand that uh, there is a huge scope apart from automation which we have to master and learn in order to crack these estate roles and also second which is the second myth which is quite contradictory to the first one is that 
you can enter as that role or you can enter the testing industry without having any knowledge on coding right now uh, why i say it is a myth because as an engineer including as that you got to have your fundamentals cleared out on your ability for reading and writing code you know so th- this mm-hmm. skill of reading and writing code would help you ultimately in uh, making better and efficient test plans in understanding the architecture in in your own career growth and ultimately saving a lot of your own time with the help of automation okay makes sense yeah so actually like i have seen this happening with a lot of my friends who are mostly into service based companies i would say uh, like most of my friends let's say they have got into testing and they have got into functional or manual testing right and they feel that the kind of work that they're doing is not very challenging uh, in terms of engineering perspectives right so uh, for them uh, if they want to transition into sdet or automation engineer roles what would be the guideline that you would love like them to follow uh, and uh, like also you, i want you to like tell them a bit uh, that uh, about the Uh, automation testing versus manual testing because i know a lot of audience would be naive and a lot of them would be freshers they might not have an idea so if you can also tell uh, a little bit on automation versus manual testing to start off with and then maybe we can uh, you can take answer the next question sure so <clears throat> uh, basically on a zoom out level uh, we can divide testing into two parts like one is exploring and one is checking right Uh, so what is exploring when you are exploring a product you are trying to find out the risk and more information about its working about it about its data and control flow right and this is the part which requires your observational and your analytical skills right so we call this mm-hmm. we call this part exp- exploratory testing and in some companies maybe ad hoc testing but th- this requires your focus areas and observational skills now there is a second category to testing which is checking where where you have some test cases in the form of actual and expected behavior and these are the ones which have the highest scope of automation because sometimes executing these test cases again and again become redundant right and uh, it is it is very important to understand that automation at this point of these checks becomes a service to ourselves so because this helps us to save some very important time which we can thus focus on the first category which we spoke about exploratory about exploring the mm-hmm. product about discussing mm-hmm. more with uh, product uh, managers developers and improving our own knowledge about the product and then uh, digging out better information and risk for the entire organization right and on that mm-hmm. note if you ask me the, the plan or strategy to transition from qa or manual role to automation role i think it is very f- important to first understand that these are not two different roles out there right they both are important mm-hmm. pillars of a wide uh, uh, role or uh, in terms of venn diagram a, a, a wide circle which which can be known by the name of quality engineering or is it right mm-hmm. so first of all in order to calm down our nerves let's stop thinking them as separate roles or east of west ends of uh, the equator so that uh, we don't consider it to be a transitional journey from a, a non tech to a tech role no it is not now, secondly it is very important to understand what exactly does this role offer and for this i would recommend mm-hmm. to talk to your mentors to talk to people who have already gone through this journey to understand the core values of this role now when you will understand the core values you will understand what you are preparing for and what you are aiming for right and then you will be able to burst mm-hmm. down the myths and plan out uh, an efficient strategy towards cracking your interviews and also performing very well in your job after you clear your interviews right 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 but let's say uh, if someone is has got into manual testing right and he wants to transition into automate uh, automation or as it rules let's say for top tech companies like fang m right so what are the things he should prepare uh, like how from where he should start uh, what are some of the good resources but most importantly can you give us a kind of a road map or kind of syllabus that he has to cover in order to at least 
sit for those interviews and crack them. Sure. So as we discussed in the last answer, it is very important to know what you are preparing for, right? So normally mm-hmm. an SDET interview or SDET day-to-day role revolves around four buckets or four categories, right? So uh, uh, mm-hmm. these four categories are testing, coding, automation and tooling, and your aptitude towards quality, right? Now, now mm-hmm. since we know the buckets and categories of our automation uh, uh, NSDET role interview preparation strategy, we can talk to our mentors and prepare a 45, 60, and in some cases a 90 day roadmap towards this, uh, towards the preparation, right? Now, let's have a quick walkthrough all these buckets. Now, coming with testing, you have to practice and clear your fundamentals on testing. This includes what are the different types of testing? What are the different levels of testing? What is a testing pyramid? Now, no matter if you have not got a chance yet to work on, say, performance testing or security testing, you are expected to learn the fundamentals of all types of testing. And it is also very important to cover all forms of testing. For example, web, mobile, API, backend, DB, data-based or in some uh, other words, ETL testing. So as uh, you, you, you would be having a, a very good idea about the breadth of the syllabus, right? Now, moving apart from testing, let's go to coding. Now, coding is something that most test engineers uh, have a repulsion from, right? Or there's a fear of coding uh, in what I have seen in most of the QA. So I, I, I want to request that let's move away from this fear and start small. So you can start with very easy mathematical questions or a very easy logical based question, which you can solve with pseudo codes and then eventually using a programming language. The second thing is don't be, don't waste too much of time in deciding between which programming language should I choose? Should I choose Java? Should I choose Python, mm-hmm. JavaScript? Or even which automation tool choose, should I choose? Should I choose Selenium, WebDriver.io, Cypress, and so on. I would recommend to choose any one programming language and understand the data structure application using that language to its core depth. Right? So, uh, for example, I started with Java because I wanted to learn the object-oriented concepts. But once I learned the depth of it, it was very easy for me to switch to uh, JavaScript, Python and other languages, right? Similarly is the case with automation. When you are trying to choose an automation tool, I would recommend to choose any one UI or API automation tool and go to its very depth. Try to focus on the fundamentals of automation, the framework building strategy, the design patterns, the, the logging, reporting, test data plugins that you will be creating and try to create end-to-end automation strategy using CICD pipelines on that tool. So you have to be very strong around tools like Git, Docker, Kubernetes, cloud tools like Mm -hmm. AWS or GCP uh, and uh, CICD tools like Jenkins, CircleCI, etc. So focus on understanding the end-to-end automation strategy rather than the tool or rather than the programming language choice, right? Then comes uh, the end, which is the culture fit or the aptitude round, you know? Uh, Here you will be judged very closely on uh, your uh, passion for quality or for your love for your user experience and especially your curiosity on the project or the product which you are being interviewed for. And uh, I uh, have seen candidates taking this aptitude round very lightly and most of them get rejected at this level because of lack of curiosity or lack of questions they have to the leadership members around the product, right? So don't take this round Mm -hmm. lightly because uh, these all four buckets make up the entire evaluation system for your candidature. That was insightful. So uh, you have cracked uh, interviews of companies like Google and Adobe, Adobe, right? So my first question to you is like, what level of coding or data structure algorithms is required in comparison with SD roles to crack 
these type of companies for this particular SDA role. And my second question is, uh, again, uh, like what, like what do you think is the difference in P skill for this SDA roles in between this top tech companies versus you know the the SD roles uh, that exist in these companies? Uh, what's what's uh, if you can share some light on that? Uh, great. So uh, first of all. Uh, the strategy for cracking uh, the companies like Google, Adobe, uh, even uh, Microsoft are a bit different, and uh, you know mm-hmm. it, it it would be uh, it would not be wrong to say that uh, it is sometimes easier to crack these fun companies than cracking the interview of small to mis- mid sized startups. You know, and I, I'll tell you I'll tell you why, because. The ninety-five percent focus of these fang companies or um, the multinational companies for SD troll is on your coding ability and your logical thinking skills, rather than the tools, mm-hmm. rather than focusing mm-hmm. on your uh, automation tool knowledge, right? Which is the other way around with some of the startups. Again, depending on their own requirements and need of the hour, right? So the clear-cut strategy for uh, clearing companies like google is to focus on your logical thinking skills focus on your problem solving ability and understand the evaluation system of a 45 minute coding round right so mm-hmm. it is very important to understand that coding round is not just testing your coding abilities it is testing your whole mm-hmm. personality in terms of your communication your loud thinking skills your Think, uh, how do you uh, think when a problem is thrown at you and w- what what is your ability to take down down the hints or what is your adaptability and flexibility level to change approach in the midway of your solution you know and even your testing skills when you are asked to create some unit test cases for your own code and then and then the debugging and the fixing that you do when a bug is caught using your own test cases so i would suggest uh the key is uh, consistent and daily practice you can solve at least 4 to 5 programming questions on tools like leetcode.com hacker earth and so on and don't focus on the hard problems straight away start with a bit very basic mm-hmm. start with uh, very basic mathematical questions then go to uh, easy level and medium level questions and in terms of data, data structure f- uh, spend most of your time around uh, the 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 easy data structures uh, because those are the ones who will test your logical skills the most but is there any hard data structure like graphs or maybe some advanced algorithms that dp uh, asked uh, in these interviews or it's just simple logical programming that are being asked um, m- mostly lead code easy or medium level so 95 of the uh, 95% of the cases would cover up to say linked list trees stack queue array strings right and uh, mm-hmm. if you are into java then java collections right yes mm-hmm. there there may be a 5% slightest of chances that uh, the interviewer might dig down into your knowledge about graphs or dp so uh, but uh, see really it is about forming patterns in your mind so if you have already cracked 100 questions of these simple data structures i think you will be at least able to give a brute force solution to those 5% slightest of chances mm. but let's first focus on those 95% uh, g- general cases and i think in most more often than not in most of the cases you will be able to pass these rounds in flying colors if you focus on 95% cases right right and my next question was uh, what do you think uh, like in comparison to the sd roles uh, like what what do you think the pay range of these sd roles are especially for this fang and top tech companies okay so again as we discussed in the starting this role has gone through major evolution right and uh, the salary ranges of this role has gone well past through its conventional uh, ranges especially in the last two or three years right so mm-hmm. d- given the current market standards and uh, again depending on the size and the structure of the organization and your roles and responsibilities uh, i i would i would say if you ask me some ballpark numbers then uh, level 1 sdet engineer 
can easily make around 10 to 20 lakh per annum and the level 2 uh, range starts from 20 plus LPA to uh, I think sky is the limit uh, after that uh, right. and and I think it, it is touching and even breaking the records of its contemporary roles so there is no stopping uh, as that engineers right right I think for Amazon it is around 13 lakhs base only exactly. uh, if I'm not wrong uh, for, for freshers so yeah I mean it's it's not very far away from the SD roles and in some cases even similar or even more than yes. that uh, anyway uh, so my next question to you is sitting in 2022 as we record this video uh, what are some of the important things frameworks tools uh, you want uh, someone who is starting off uh, in this in this particular field to learn or what, maybe you can talk about some of the hot frameworks or tools that that every company out there is asking. Okay, so let, let's list down some of the very hot frameworks right now, uh, which are in demand among the interviewers and also among the uh, companies. So first one is, of course, any one mobile UI automation tool. So you can pick up any one uh, mm -hmm. mobile automation tools like uh, APM or Detox mm -hmm. or UI Automator. But you, again, go through the end-to-end -end journey of mobile application okay. that will help you a lot. Then uh, one web UI automation tool I would recommend. Uh, again, it can be uh, Selenium or WebDriver I/O or any other tool. Then you have to be very comfortable around API testing. So that can be covered using tools like Postman, mm -hmm. uh, using frameworks like uh, Rest Assured or SuperTest uh, using JavaScript. Now is the time to also conquer some of the DevOps tool. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. right now, uh, the SDET is also expected to have a clear cut knowledge on some of the DevOps tool like Docker uh, and Kubernetes so that you can containerize your test and run them more efficiently, right? You have to be very comfortable around cloud tools like AWS, GCP. Uh, you should have immense knowledge on database, which includes SQL and non-SQL databases. And uh, at the end, I would say have a deep knowledge on the system design and the architecture because that will help you a long way mm -hmm. in your career growth. System design and the architecture, you mean the backend systems yes. like the messaging queues yes. and all those things? Yes. So, mm -hmm. makes sense. And in the end, yeah, yeah, so one of the, one of the reasons why I said that was the convention role was limited to the UI testing. Right. But now it's time mm -hmm. to go beyond the curtains to know what ha what's happening beyond the uh, UI and how uh, the request actually travels from the UI to the end layer, which is the database and comes back. What all layers are in between these two endpoints and what all is happening so that you can really open your mind and bring out greater risk for the team and the company. Right, right, right. And talking about the framework, since you also talked about the framework, let's also discuss about the programming languages because this is, I think, a huge point of confusion among a lot of people starting out with testing they feel that whether they should go with java python so what's what's your take on that what's what is a good programming language to start off with or is there any programming language constraints at all yeah so as i said in the beginning it is always advisable not to waste too much time in the, this choice of programming mm -hmm. language right mm -hmm. if you go by my recommendation i would always suggest to pick up any programming language which supports object oriented programming because that will clear mm -hmm. your four pillars of uh, object oriented concepts and also help you a long way in understanding the developer's code as well right so i i uh, always recommend to start with language like java and then eventually you can switch to your own programming language of choice like python javascript etc as per the need basis uh, and also wanted to understand, like, let's say that if someone who doesn't have any experience in SDET, right, and he's applying to SDET roles as freshers or whatever, like with zero plus experience role, right? So uh, what are the, some of the hands-on experience he can get or maybe the projects he can try building on his own that he can leverage uh, during these interviews? So uh, for freshers, the kind of uh, interviews will have are a little different. Uh, mostly they will focus on the kind of practice projects that you have worked on or uh, some mock projects and uh, you can also have some freelancing projects that that you that you can use mm -hmm. to showcase your skills uh, i think best would be to pick up a microservice architecture based project uh, so that it will help you to showcase your end-to-end uh, -end 
testing skills including api database uh, ui uh, and you can have uh, a couple of automation uh, projects also built up on the same project so it is always advisable to have a single project to showcase in the interview for both your testing and automation skill and uh, mm-hmm. uh, and and it is always advisable not to go without any such project right and let's say if someone has let's say uh, i have seen a, i've got a lot of query uh, regarding this so let's say uh, for freshers who are who are not who are not are very new to this field right and they suddenly have this sd interview coming up because sometimes i also see that companies like amazon uh, or other companies they do visit uh, their campus hiring for this sd type of roles and people doesn't have much idea on it so what are the things then should they should focus if they given their very limited time obviously they have to focus on the basic coding skills but apart from that any last moment suggestions you would love to give them in case such a company hi- comes with such a role so uh, again for freshers they will uh, sp- majorly focus on your uh, logical thinking ability on your problem solving ability so be very open with your communication and with your loud thinking skills show them uh, your approach of finding the solution be very flexible in taking the hints and changing your patterns and for your preparation strategy i would uh, suggest to have focus on coding exercises on uh, your the, the fundamentals of testing again are very important even if you have less time i would suggest you to go through some of uh, youtube or udemy videos on basics of uh, testing and uh, then any good resources you can suggest i i can uh, share uh, in the description later with you some of the good youtube and udemy yes. resources which can really help you to uh, master the basic testing skills for interviews and uh, mm-hmm. i think uh, last but not the least it is very important to have an idea about uh, some tools like of performance testing and api testing which i think most of us miss uh, in our preparation strategy and which is nowadays very important for freshers also so yeah you can go through these tools makes sense so we are almost at the end of the podcast uh, so my last question to you would be uh sitting in 2022 uh like what do you how do you see the future of testing and if you want uh my to talk uh, about the same to my viewers and if you want to motivate them to come to testing uh like you are free to do so sure so i i think the last 5 years uh of uh, testing have been uh really awesome the kind of progress the kind of uh, uh evolving this role has seen think it is uh, tremendous it is historic and uh, i i i believe that coming in the coming year uh, 2023 this role will break all its records this role will can be and will be one of the most in demand roles in the tech industry given its uh, its r- roles and responsibilities and its importance in the ultimate success of every startup and every product i uh, right now these days i am seeing leadership and including uh, the top management of companies hiring for sdets even on day 0 even after they uh, their series a funding round which is mm. kind of amazing and uh, uh, we should be very happy being part of this community and it is a very welcoming and open field and there is a tremendous scope for growth and for the career ladder with this role yeah mm-hmm. thank you so much thank you so much sail for you know taking some time out and agreeing to do this with me uh like he also writes some amazing blogs so i will attach the link to it in the description down below and also his youtube channel as well and also don't forget to follow him on linkedin as well because the, he writes some amazing articles over there as well and that's from from there actually i got to know about him so thank you so much sail uh for agreeing to do this with me i wish you all the best thank and any uh, any last words of advice you want to give out uh, to my audience or like kind of aspirants to come to this field the only thing that is stopping us is our own will no the secret is to get out of your comfort zone and be ready to move beyond the defined walls and learn and keep growing mm-hmm. okay all the best Thank you so much. I will attach a link to Sahil's LinkedIn account as well. If you have any doubts regarding to testing, you can obviously feel free to you know connect with him. Uh, so thank you so much, guys. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and goodbye.